Straight Shift. With the Car Chick, the podcast that's all about cars, buying, selling, fixing, and driving. And sometimes pretty fast if you're the Car Chick. Now, here's he is. Welcome, everyone, to the Straight Shift and Happy Holidays. It is the crazy holiday season, which for a lot of people means looking at buying a new car by the end of the year. Whether your accountant has told you, hey, you need to buy this kind of vehicle to deduct it all from your taxes, or you just want to take advantage of the great year-end savings, this is my craziest time of the year. December for me is a lot like April for accountants, so it's just nuts, but it's also a lot of fun. And so today I wanted to talk about all the stuff stuff, the extras that they try to sell you in the finance office when you're trying to sign the paperwork and close out your car deal. You know, a lot of people think that they, you know, they've negotiated really hard and they've gotten a great deal on the car that they're buying and they think, woohoo, I win, I got a great deal. They don't realize that the hard sell actually happens in the finance office with the finance manager, not necessarily with the salesperson who is selling you the car. Ever since car buying really dramatically changed with the advent of the internet and online shopping and being able to you know, shop for cars online so easily, you know, that's when dealers started seeing their front end profits on the cars themselves just plummet. And that's why I say, you know, getting a great deal on the car that you're buying is the easiest part of the deal. That is just not that hard. The information is out there. It's easily available, you know, when you're talking about new cars. So the dealers have had to kind of shift where they make their profits. And of course, you know, I will always advocate that dealers have a right to make a fair profit. They're a business. They're not a charity. However, because things are negotiable, you know, you as a consumer need to be educated so that you know where in the deal they can make profit and you can lose money. So that's why I want to talk about all these extras in the finance office, because that's where dealerships make most of their money these days. And I have no problems with, you know, if it's a product that will actually be of value to you and you pay a fair price for it and the dealer makes a profit, that's a win-win. That's not a problem. But most of the stuff that they spring on you in the finance office, quite frankly, is stuff that you probably don't need. So I want to go to go through this, you know, the, the reason they spring this on you in the finance office and they don't talk about it ahead of time is because they're relying on you having to make a split second decision and not have time to do your homework and really think through it and do any math. You know, this is the surprise sale at the end. They're also kind of relying on the fact that you've probably been at the dealership for several hours at this point and you really just want to sign the paperwork and get the heck out of there. So it's kind of, you know, a, a double-edged surprise, you know, that, that wears you down to try and get you to just say yes, just so you can get out of there or without really thinking it through. And if you guys have been following me, listening to me, watching my videos, you know, over the last several years that I've been doing this, you know that I am a huge advocate for making smart and deliberate financial decisions, not impulse buying, you know, not just saying yes, because, you know, that looks pretty decent, but you don't have time to do the homework. I'm a researcher. I am very diligent in the way I spend money with the exception of when I see a cute pair of shoes. But for the big stuff, I make very deliberate decisions. I do a lot of research and I only spend money where I feel I'm truly going to get the value out of it. And I'm going to see a return on that investment in one place or another. So let's talk about the most common things that will be presented to you once you get into the finance office and whether or not you need them. And one of the tricks that they do is they tend to show you how if you buy this product, what change does it make to your monthly payment? You know, let's say your monthly payment is $500 a month just for the car. You know, oh, and if you add in this extended service contract or, you know, this gap insurance or whatever it is, you know, your payment only goes up by X number of dollars per month. Well, what that does is you think, oh, okay, you know, it goes up another, you know, 15 bucks a month. I, I can handle that. That's not that bad. So you don't think about, okay, wait a minute. 
what is the actual cost of this product that they're trying to sell me? So never just look at what the change to your monthly payment would be if you added in that product. Always ask, how much cash money is this product? Because that will help you determine, oh, wow, okay, yeah, it may only change your monthly payment by $15, but it's a $2,000 product. Holy cow, would you actually spend $2,000 cash on this product or not. And that's really how you have to evaluate it if you're going to make a smart financial decision. The most common product you're going to be offered in the finance office is what we think of as an extended warranty. You know, as consumers and laymen, you know, we talk about it as an extended warranty, but I want to clarify, it's not legally an extended warranty. The term warranty, while we may throw it around casually, does have, it is a legal term. And legally, a warranty is a, a guarantee of quality for a certain period of time that is offered by either the manufacturer of the product or the retailer of the product. And so your factory warranty that comes with your new car, it's like three years, 36,000 miles, four years, 50,000 miles, whatever that is, that is a true warranty. It is offered to you by the manufacturer of the product, in this case the car, at no additional cost to you. And that's the key. Warranties do not cost you money. The manufacturer pays for it or the retailer pays for it, but it is something that they are guaranteeing to you on this product at no cost to you. Therefore, the ex what we think of as an extended warranty that they offer you in the finance office for additional money is legally an extended service contract. And most of these things, the contracts, you know, I have looked at these extended contracts and I'm just probably just going to refer to them as extended warranties because that's how we think of them and, you know, just know that that's not legally correct. But the extended warranties have really gone up in price, I have noticed, because I always price these things out when, you know, if I have a client who might be interested in buying one, I make sure that I get the information from the finance manager ahead of time before we go to the dealership to close the deal so that I can evaluate all the nitty gritty details and the numbers and help my client decide, is this really worth the money to them? And I've noticed just how dramatically these things have gone up just in the last few years. You know, used to, you could get, you know, an extended warranty, you know, somewhere between a thousand and two thousand dollars $2,000. And now those prices have at least doubled. Um, just got a really beautiful brand new Lexus RX350 for a client and was just amazingly shocked at the fact that the extended warranty on it as a new vehicle was like $4,000. It was like, holy cow, you know, this is a glorified Toyota. Lexus usually had very reasonably priced extended warranties. But one of the reasons these things have gone up is because of all the new technology that has been added into cars. Cars, as I have said many times, are more computers and electronics than they are mechanics practically these days. And those are the systems that are very expensive. They're also building more and more things as modules on cars. So, you know, when something breaks, you don't just replace that one part that broke. You have to replace like the whole group of parts that go together because it's a module. So the repair costs of cars have gone up and the extended warranty costs have gone up accordingly. So that's definitely something to be aware of. You know, extended warranty, your extended service contract these days is probably going to run you at least $2,000, even on something like a Honda or a Toyota. Is that worth it or is it not worth it? Well, I did a whole video on this a couple of years ago. So if you want to go check that out, it is on my YouTube channel at um, www.carchick-tv.com or you can go to my regular website, thecarchick.com, click on the little YouTube icon in the upper right hand corner and it will take you there. And I did a, a whole video on whether or not you should consider an extended warranty. You know, basically it's, it's kind of insurance against something breaking that shouldn't break within the, the period of that extended warranty. And there's a reason that you don't typically see extended warranties go beyond 100,000 miles because that's when stuff just starts breaking normally. It's considered normal wear and tear and it's a much higher risk to the, you know, basically insurance company in order to provide that because the likelihood of something going wrong is so much higher, higher risk to them equals higher cost to you. So is it worth it? Is it not? You know, my personal philosophy is 
buy a vehicle that is known to be reliable in the first place. And then, yes, we don't really know how the technology is going to shake out and, and how reliable that's going to be. And with all these little cameras and computers and everything else, it is a big unknown. And if those things do break, become defective, they are going to be very expensive to fix. But if you still look at the industry data um, and Consumer Reports and J.D. Powers and other of the research groups out there, they do correlate this data. They look at it and they say, OK, you know, for people that have spent an you know, X amount of dollars on an extended warranty. What is the average amount that they have spent on it? And then compare that to what, for the people that have used the warranty, how many of them actually used that warranty, first of all? And second of all, if they did use it, what were the cost of those repairs? And did that cost exceed or at least equal the price they paid for the warranty? And the answer in the vast majority of cases is no. You know, even if you use it, you think, oh, wow, I had a problem. You know, thank God I had this extended warranty. It paid for it. But, you know, the cost of the repairs would have been $1,500 and you paid $3,000 for that warranty. So you still got another $1,500 to go before it paid for itself. And if you rolled that warranty into the deal and you're financing it all, not only are you paying the cost of that warranty or any of the other products you buy, but now you're also paying whatever the interest rate is on those. So now maybe you're paying also 5% interest for 60 months on that. So you got to factor that into your costs as well, which is why I don't believe that you should ever finance any of these products. If you want them, you need to pay cash for them. My other personal philosophy is that I personally just don't like definitely paying money, at least a large sum of money up front in the hopes that I won't have to pay for it later. I'm like, I'm really just not going to give you my money unless I know that I, for sure that I'm going to get something in return for that money. You know, obviously you have to pay for normal car insurance because it's required by law and that's fine. But you know, eh, it's like, yeah, I'm going to definitely hand over 2,500 of my hard earned dollars now just in case something breaks later, mm, you know, I'm just not going to do that. That's me. Some people would rather have that peace of mind because they know it's like, well, you know, I can swing an extra $15 a month, but if I do have something, you know, come up down the line, I don't have $2,000 sitting in my bank account that would cover the cost of this repair out of pocket. And if that's your financial situation and it gives you the peace of mind, you'd rather have that warranty. That's perfectly fine. But here's what you need to do. You need to ask several questions. Number one, who is that warranty through? Is it the extended service contract through the manufacturer? In most cases, when you're buying a new car, the manufacturer does offer extended options. Um, and they're usually the best bet and they're usually the best priced. So always ask first, if you can get one that is backed by the manufacturer, that is your best bet. Um, other dealers will offer them through third parties. Some dealerships, if it's a large enough group, sometimes they have actually formed their own companies that offer these products themselves. Um, and those are usually more expensive. And sometimes that's the only one that they will sell. They won't even offer you the one from the manufacturer, in which case that ticks me off. And I just say no, <laughs> because the manufacturer usually has a better product for less money. And I'm not, just because you're trying to pad your pocket on multiple fronts does not mean I'm going to buy it from you. So really understand who it's through. If it's through a true third party, warranty company, be sure you research that company and make sure they're a good company that they actually do pay out. A lot of these companies are borderline scams and you sign the contract, but they have a million ways to get out of it or they're just jerks and they don't get out of it because they found that, you know, the cost of, you know, any legal action you may take against them costs less than actually paying out on the warranty claims. So be very, very careful and research if it's a third party company and do they pay out. Make sure you know what is covered and what is not covered because an extended warranty does not mean that it's going to pay for any repair that you may have, especially a lot of these third party companies and heaven forbid all the scammers that call you and send you letters trying to sell you one after the fact. Don't ever buy those. And I've got another video about that on my YouTube channel. You know, you need to just understand what's covered and what's not, you know, your wear and tear items, brakes, you know, your fluid changes, really anything that is considered maintenance or a normal wear and tear item, that's not covered. If your clutch goes out, that's usually not covered unless it goes out really, really early. And obviously this is for those of us that drive three pedal cars, but there are just certain things that are expected to wear out on a car and the warranties usually don't cover those 
because it's just a normal maintenance item or a normal wear and tear item. So make sure you get the nauseatingly detailed list of every single thing that is covered and not covered. Really be sure that it covers the high-tech electronics, the computers, the cameras. These are the things that are more likely to go wrong on the car and are going to be expensive. So be sure those are covered. You know, if it's manufacturer-backed, yes, that will most likely be covered. But just make sure you see that exclusions list and know exactly what is covered, what is not covered, and the circumstances. Be sure you understand what the deductible is. Are you paying a zero deductible? Are you paying a hundred deductible? Typically there are different options and you can ask for different prices for different options. I have found that the incremental cost between a zero deductible and a hundred dollar deductible is usually negligible. And it's like, oh, I'd rather have the zero deductible if I'm going to buy one of these things to begin with. So just be sure that you understand these things. Find out, you know, if, if I end up not keeping the car, you know, does, is it transferable? Is it, can I call and cancel and get a prorated amount of my money back? And what's the process to do that? Because sometimes they say you can, but it's not easy to do. And you get back, you know, like $5 instead of $3,000. So these are questions to ask if you are considering getting an extended service contract on your vehicle. If you do want one, make sure you know how many miles a year are you going to put on the car? And does the the terms of that extended service contract really fit your driving style. If you drive 25,000 miles a year, you know, you need a contract that is the maximum number of mileage for the minimum number of years. If you only drive five or 6,000 miles a year, then you want one that's going to cover the maximum number of years and lower miles. There are lots of different ways to solve that puzzle. They offer many different combinations of years of mileage. So make sure that you price one out that fits the number of years you're going to keep the car and how many miles you're going to put on it in those years so that you're not paying for extra years or miles that you're never ever going to use. All right, I'm going to take a really quick break and when we come back we're going to talk about some other products like gap insurance and prepaid maintenance and the wheel and tire thing and to see are any of those things worth it to you. I'll be right back after this. Do you hate car shopping? Do you worry about being taken advantage of or about finding the right car at a fair price? Buying a car can be a frustrating and time-consuming experience. But what if you could get a great deal without having to do a ton of research, without having to haggle, and without the fear of buying a lemon? You can. As your personal car shopper, the Car Chick will help you pick the perfect car based on your unique lifestyle, budget, and personality. She'll handle all of the legwork and negotiating for you. All you have to do is sign the papers and take the keys. It's that easy. To learn how the Car Chick can save you time, money, and hassle on your next car purchase, give us a call at 888-575-2138. That's 888-575-2138 or visit us on the web at thecarchick.com. Ah, the car chick is back for more Straight Shift. And we're back with the Straight Shift talking about all of the extras that they try to sell you in the finance office at the dealership when you are buying a new or pre-owned car. We talked before the break about extended warranties and whether they're worth it and all the questions you need to ask if you think you might want to purchase one of these. But that's just the first thing that they throw at you in the finance office. There's usually a laundry list of things that they would like to sell you because that is where they make their most money, their most profit. One thing that dealers will frequently sell is gap insurance. Here's what gap insurance is. Most people finance vehicles. We get loans for them because we don't have that much cash sitting around. And because the loan terms tend to be, you know, 60, sometimes 72 months, a car is almost always going to depreciate faster than you're going to pay it off. So let's say you bought a $30,000 car and after just having it for a year and a half, you know, somebody hits you and the car is totaled. Well, your insurance that you normally carry on it will pay you the amount that they feel that car is worth, depending on the year and mileage and condition, obviously before it was wrecked. And they don't really care how much you owe on your loan. So let's say that $30,000 car that you bought, you know, your insurance company says it's worth $20,000. Well, you financed the whole thing for 72 months, and so you still owe $26,000 on it. Guess what? That $6,000 between what your insurance company will pay and what the payoff on the loan is, that is your responsibility. And 
if you don't have that cash to cover it, you may find yourself in a pickle. What gap insurance does is in that situation, it will kick in and say, hey, don't worry, we'll cover that extra 6,000, no problem. And in the past, having that kind of gap insurance, if you drive a lot of miles, if you're not putting a significant amount of money down on the car and you are financing it for anything more than 48 months, gap insurance was not a bad idea to hedge your bets. That was back, you know, several years ago when you could get gap insurance for three or 400 bucks. You know, it's a one time you pay it up front. Now they're selling gap insurance for eight, nine hundred dollars, a thousand dollars. At that point, the business case for it tends to fall off. And so, you know, I really look at, uh, you know, that's, that's a lot of money to pay for, you know, that type of insurance. Really look at, you know, how you're financing the vehicle. And, you know, my personal philosophy again here is let's make a smart financial decision up front. And if you're driving a car 20 plus thousand miles a year because you're in sales or you're a realtor or you just have a ridiculous commute, I won't really recommend financing that vehicle for 72 months. If you have to do that to afford it, you're probably just buying too much car. Look, relook at your budget and buy a less expensive vehicle, one that's also really reliable that you're going to be able to put a lot of miles on without having a lot of cost too, you know, so that you're financing it in a, in a smarter way. You don't want to be that upside down on a vehicle, especially if you're driving a lot of miles. So nowadays I tend to kind of shy people away from gap insurance unless we can get it at a really good price. Um, you have alternatives. I have done this for several clients because they found themselves in that situation to where their car was totaled in an accident and they were upside down on that loan. Here's what can happen in that situation that most people, you know, no, the dealer certainly won't tell you, and the banks usually don't tell you, but they have a process called collateral substitution because, quite frankly, the bank doesn't want to be out of that money either. <laughs> so what they'll do is you call up your whoever your loan is through and say, hey, I was in an accident. The car was told my insurance company is only going to give me this amount. I don't have enough cash to cover the gap. Can we do a collateral substitution? What that means is the bank will give you parameters and they'll say, okay, go out and find yourself another car to replace the one that was totaled. And it usually has to be at least the same year or newer and at least the same mileage or less. And what they'll do is you buy that car and they will literally substitute that car in for your old one underneath the same loan. And the loan doesn't change. It's literally the loan stays the same. You know, whatever you've paid on it, you know, still stays paid off. The balance stays the same. But they literally have just taken the VIN number from your old car and replaced it with the VIN number of the new car that you're replacing it with. So for the bank, it's just, okay, it's a slightly different car, but everything's pretty much the same on our end. We're cool with it. And now you just continue to pay. It can be challenging to find a vehicle that meets those terms. And, you know, you may have to come out of pocket a little bit to cover the tax and tags and whatnot, but it can also be a better deal than, you know, having paid too much for the gap insurance at the beginning and certainly better than trying to come up with that negative equity amount out of your pocket. So it's called a collateral substitution and I have yet to find a bank that doesn't do it. So that is an option while challenging. If it happens, I would rather, you know, have that as a process that, you know what, if I get myself into the situation, you know, I, I'm a good driver. I try to pay attention. You know, the chances of me getting in an accident where my car is totaled might be a little bit lower. I'm not going to definitely pay a thousand dollars for this gap insurance thing. If it happens to me, I will, suffer through the collateral substitution process and make it work. I made it work for clients multiple times in the past, hasn't been a huge deal. So you might decide to choose to go that route if you need to, instead of definitely paying, you know, a ridiculous amount of money, what they're charging for gap insurance up front. Another thing they may offer you in the finance office is a prepaid maintenance package. These can actually be a good deal. You know, if you like to do your service at the dealership, and when you have a brand new car that is under the factory warranty, that's not necessarily a bad idea because if you do have a warranty issue, the, they can't claim that, oh, well, it wasn't maintained properly by a qualified technician, you know, which if you take it to somebody else, they may claim that. They really shouldn't, but I've seen it happen. So if you like to do your maintenance at the dealership, the prepaid maintenance package can be helpful because what they do is they look at, you know, how, for however many miles and or years, and typically, like with the extended service contracts, you can choose a little bit. Sometimes they're flexible, and, you know, depending on how many years you plan to keep the car, or how many miles a year you're going to put on it. 
they will have a different package for you. But they're all different. Um, it's best if they're offered by the manufacturer, because again, then it's going to be good at any dealership across the country for that manufacturer, you know, any Honda store, any Toyota store, any Ford store, whatever. Um, but find out who backs it and then find out what is included. Some of them only include your oil changes and tire rotations. They don't include anything else. Then it's like, okay, you know, how much money am I really saving? For example, in the past, and I haven't looked at them in a while, but Subaru's prepaid maintenance package really didn't help any. I mean, it didn't save you any money. It didn't really include anything but oil changes. And a couple of my Subaru dealers didn't even sell it because they didn't feel it was worth it. Um, you know, some other ones like with Honda, those can be worth it. They'll save you, you know, around 20% on your maintenance costs. If you buy it all up front, they usually give you a nice little card. It makes it really easy. You just go in, hand them your card, they swipe it. You know, if it covers all of the maintenance that is listed in the manufacturer's maintenance schedule, then it can be worth it. But be sure you understand what it covers. If it's just a few oil changes, that may not be worth it. If it's the full maintenance package, that probably will be worth it. Um, typically, it will still not include you know, your items like your windshield wipers, um, your, your tires, your brakes. Some of them do. Um, so you just need to understand, again, what is covered and how much money is it going to save you. Here's another reason to, to buy that up front. If you roll it into your car deal, it is typically charged at the tax that you pay on the vehicle. So, for example, North Carolina, its vehicle tax is 3%. Whereas sales tax, which North Carolina now charges on vehicle maintenance. So when you take your car in for an oil change, you are now being charged sales tax on that service where you didn't used to. Thank you, North Carolina. Um, so, you know, instead of paying the 7.5% sales tax on the service every time you take your car in, you're only paying the 3% up front. Now, if you roll it into a loan and are paying 5% interest on it over five years, then that's probably going to negate all your savings and I wouldn't recommend doing it. Again, if you're going to buy any of these things, pay cash for them. Don't roll it into the loan because you'll end up paying the interest charges on it. And interest rates have been going up a lot. So it's, you know, if you have a 0% loan, great, no problem. But those are becoming few and far between. Another thing that they will frequently offer you is a wheel and tire protection package. And what they will tell you is, oh, your wheels are really on this car are really expensive and they're really soft. And if you hit a pothole and you damage that wheel or you damage that tire, this will cover the cost of replacement, you know, because your wheels cost this much and your tires cost this much. And they make it sound like, oh my God, how could you possibly live without this protection package because you're going to be denting wheels and blowing tires, you know, every five minutes that you drive down the road. That's usually not true. And these packages tend to be very expensive. They're usually over a thousand dollars. And here's the thing. I have seen a lot of them don't pay out very well. Um, there are probably some that do, but I'm always a little nervous about, are they actually going to pay if something happens? They usually do not pay if you have, you know, what's called curbed your wheel. You've scraped it against the, the curb when you parallel parked and messed up your wheel. Sometimes they'll tell you that's covered, but then when you actually go and make a claim, they're like, uh, no, that was your fault. We don't cover that. So again, you need to understand what it covers. And if you are buying a you know sporty car that has really low profile high performance tires you know, that don't have a very tall sidewall and you have very expensive wheels and you personally as a driver tend to be prone to hitting potholes and things like that it might be worth it to you um you know my father-in-law bless his heart has destroyed every wheel on every car he's ever driven i think and so you know for him that might not have been a bad deal um but for most people you know keep just keep proper air inflation in your tires to protect the wheel and don't hit the dang potholes. I mean, I know in Charlotte that can be challenging because we have potholes the size of moon craters here, but just be careful. You know, if you drive an SUV, yeah, you might have big 20 inch rims and tires on it, which are expensive, but if you keep the right air in them, that's a pretty big tire. It's very unlikely that you're going to hit something so hard that you actually damage that wheel. And quite frankly, if you do, there are companies out there that can straighten out your rims, that can fix them. You need to know, you know, if you do decide to get it and if they cover the tire, let's say you pop a tire, you know, you run over a nail or whatnot and you have to replace that tire, 
do they only replace that one tire? Because you never replace just one tire on a car. If you've heard my tire rants in the past, you've always got to, if you have a two wheel drive vehicle, the two tires on that axle always have to match and tread. If you have a four wheel drive or all wheel drive vehicle, all four of them need to match or you're going to mess up your suspension. So find out, you know, you may still be on the hook for replacing the other one out of your own pocket. And now again, it's the value of that package is reduced. I personally hate the wheel and tire things. Don't do it. If you bust a wheel or a tire, there's plenty of companies out there that will fix the wheel at a much reduced cost to what they sell these packages for. Some of them will sell a security package where it includes like a maybe some type of low jack type system and window etching. Unless you live in a really high theft area, and even if you do, these things are not worth it. They will sometimes charge $500 just to etch the VIN number in your windows. And they'll tell you that, hey, you know, you'll get a discount on your insurance if you have this. Uh, I've talked to insurance companies and they're like, oh no, that's completely useless. We don't offer a discount for having that. So there's little value in those things. And if you really want to etch the VIN number onto your windows, which supposedly reduces the value of the car to the people stealing it, which also probably isn't true because they're probably stealing it for parts or for shipping it overseas and nobody gives a rat's ass what the VIN number is and if it's on a window. But if you'd like to etch your window, they have a kit to do that yourself on Amazon for less than $20. So I would definitely pass on any of the security things. The last thing they might offer you is a car care protection kit where sometimes they'll actually give you a little kit with the, the stuff to clean your car. And if you're a person that likes to do your own detailing, great. There's actually a lot better products out there that you can buy cheaper, but they'll say that they put a protection on the car on the outside, on the paint, on the inside, on your upholstery, that if you ever get a stain or a tear or a burn or anything goes wrong or you get you know, acid rain damage or something peels on the paint, it fades, they will fix that for you for free. Does not cover hail damage. Keep that in mind. Um, that's covered by your regular insurance typically. And Again, they charge a ridiculous amount of money for these things, and a lot of the times it's glorified turtle wax and Scotch Guard. So you need to really learn, you know, what the quality is of the product that they're using. And the only time I think this is worth it is if you have children, young, messy children that are constantly spilling juice and you know crushing goldfish crackers into your upholstery, or if you do a lot of eating and drinking in your car which you really shouldn't do. It's not safe, <laughs> but there's a lot of people that do. You know, you're spilling coffee on yourself all the time. If you just know that you tend to destroy the interior of your car and that's not a habit you're likely to break anytime soon, then it can be worth it um, to have that protection. I also say, you know, if you tend to have a messy car, then it's worth it to invest having your car detailed at least once every quarter by a really good detail person. And that will often be less money than paying for some of these packages up front. But again, the car care thing, if you're one of those people with kids with coffee, it might be worth it to you. But on any of these packages, if you do feel that it would be worth it to you, absolutely negotiate the cost of it. The prepaid maintenance is usually the only package that does not have a markup and therefore cannot be negotiated. Although you might ask them to throw it in if it's just oil changes, throw it in for free with your deal to kind of sweeten the deal on your car. I just did that for a client on a new Tahoe. But most of the others are negotiable. There are a few states that have some laws that say the dealers can't, they have to sell it to the same price to everybody. But certainly in the Carolinas and most dealerships, they will negotiate on that. With a lot of the dealership groups, my clients get those at employee cost, which is really like a dollar over the dealer cost. So the finance managers hate me because they don't make any money, but it's it's a value to my clients. And I have that kind of negotiated with the owner of the dealership group, so they have no choice. But definitely negotiate because there's usually you know, at least a 50, if not a hundred percent markup on these products. So it definitely behooves you to make sure you get it for the least amount of money because at the prices that they sell these things, they are not worth that amount of money. But at a lower price, they might be worth it to you if you see the return on that investment being highly likely. So I hope this has been helpful talking about all the stuff they're going to spring on you in the finance office, you know, the dealers are just trying to make money wherever they can because 
the prices of the cars that they're selling, you know, all that information is free on the internet and people negotiate a lot more aggressively now than they used to. So they're not making profits up front. They have to find other places to make those profits on the back end in order to stay in business and make money. But you as the consumer also shouldn't pay for something that you really don't need or pay too much for something that is not going to give you that value back. So if you're thinking about looking for a car this season and you don't want to go through all this hassle or you have any questions about these products in the finance office, you're welcome to reach out to me at my website, thecarchick.com, and I'd be happy to help. Everybody, drive safely, have an enjoyable holiday season, and I'll see you next time. The Straight Shift Podcast is copyright Leanne Shattuck, The Car Chick, 2017. All views expressed by guest and or co-hosts are those of the guest and or co-hosts, and not necessarily those of Leanne Shattuck or the car chair.